An exhibit in Washington is taking visitors to the scene of the crime. And though what you're about to see isn't real, some of the images are troubling. Aaron Moriarty, who's covered many an actual crime scene for 48 hours, is our guide. A warning before stepping inside the Smithsonian's Remwick Gallery in Washington, D.C. These charming dollhouses on display, they are in fact miniature death scenes where farmer Eben Wallace is hanging from a rafter in his barn. A housewife lays just inches away from her freshly baked cake and the entire Judson family appears to be shot to death. This is definitely the most unusual exhibition that we've done here at the museum and I think that I've done personally. Curator Nora Atkinson organized the first and only public exhibit of what are known as the nutshell studies of unexplained death. So the blood's on her face, but also on the wall. When you first chose to put on these displays, was there a concern that this is just a little too macabre? For sure, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure if the public could handle it, and it's been an amazing success. Ooh, there's blood in the baby's crib. What draws in crowds are 19 scenes, most based on true events from the 1940s, recreated with mind-boggling details at a scale of one inch to one foot. Fully stocked kitchens, tiny bookends, a half-inch rolling pin, newspapers with actual headlines. It's like a window into the past, which is really amazing. And, of course, as these are death scenes, realistic blood spatter on the walls. So this is called Three Room Dwelling. This is probably the most gruesome scene of the bunch because this is the only multiple homicide or multiple homicide suicide. Macabre, yes, but these carefully crafted dioramas are not designed to shock. Accident or arson, is that the major question here? That's the major question. They are pioneering training tools for crime scene investigators created more than 70 years ago by an Illinois heiress named Frances Glessner Lee. Is this actually art? Well, I don't think Frances would have thought of it as art, but I definitely think it falls into that realm. Frances Glessner Lee is an extraordinary woman. She's like no one in the world. Maybe I can Filmmaker Susan Marks has made two documentaries about well, Lee and the Nutshells. Lee was born in 1878, and while she never attended college, she helped transform the field of forensic science. She would collect every book that was out there about science and legal medicine and forensics so she could become an expert herself. Her interest was sparked by a family friend, Dr. George Burgess McGrath, one of the first medical examiners in the country who believed many cases went unsolved because untrained investigators contaminated or misread crime scenes. They would talk for hours and hours in the evenings about crimes and the state of crime detection, and she decided, I can do something about that. At age 65, Lee, then living in New Hampshire, began meticulously constructing the 3D models, spending three to six months on each one. She would go about picking her cases very carefully and then change the facts around a little bit so it didn't mirror too closely to an actual crime scene so they wouldn't be easy to figure out. Based on a motto Lee often heard from detectives, convict the guilty, clear the innocent, and find the truth in a nutshell, she began to call her models the nutshell studies. She wanted people to come to these and really investigate what were the circumstances of these people. She even funded a forensics department at Harvard University that hosted seminars using her models. Lee was so influential, in 1943, she was named police captain in New Hampshire, the first woman in the country with that rank. A lot of people did not appreciate her in her time, and she just kept pushing through. But she knew on some level that what she was doing was valuable and helpful. After Lee died in 1962, everything was moved from Boston to the Maryland Medical Examiner's Office in Baltimore. I, I love them all. They're like my children. I can't choose just one. Bruce Goldfarb, 
who maintains the dioramas, says they're still used to help hone the observation skills of investigators. Their value today is the same. There's no other medium that you could do this. And while the crimes they depict happened more than 70 years ago, Francis Glessner Lee recognized that some things never change. There's drinking. There are prostitutes, poor people, people who are really far removed from Francis's own social circles. So why do you think she created it this way? Because she felt that it was important because that person's death deserves the same investigation as anybody else. The models will return to this room when the Smithsonian exhibit ends. But until then, museum goers get to struggle with the same questions that have stumped seasoned investigators for decades. What about Mrs. Barnes in the kitchen? The door is stuffed with newspaper, but was this really a suicide? Or take a shot at solving the deaths of the Judson family. It doesn't look like the wife could have done it because it looks like she was shot in the bed. And the baby couldn't have done it, obviously, so it has to be an intruder or the husband. Still, if you're hoping for actual answers, you might be disappointed. So, in the three-room dwelling, yes. was it a murder-suicide or you. murders? You're not going to tell me. I can't tell you. Okay. Um, we, keep them, we keep them secret. The answers are literally under lock and key. So you have to come to it with an open mind and an eye for those details and figure it out for yourself.